At the close of the 19th century, Sarah Winnemucca dedicated her life to protecting the people and culture of the Northern Paiute Nation. Born around 1844, Sarah was raised in the Paiute community, traveling between encampments and learning about their traditions and culture. Her grandfather made sure she learned to speak English and Spanish. He believed working with settlers would be essential for the future of the Northern Paiute people. Sarah's trilingualism was a useful tool, but living between two cultures sometimes made her an outsider. She worked as a translator between the Northern Paiute and the American government, and hoped the two nations could peacefully coexist. But in 1876, a new government agent took over. He believed that the Northern Paiute should submit to white rule. Sarah was fired, and the Paiute were forced to move to a reservation. Realizing that cooperating with the U.S. government was not working, Sarah shifted tactics. She began to formally advocate for the rights of the Northern Paiute by writing letters and petitions to the U.S. government. She also gave lectures about Paiute culture and U.S. aggression towards indigenous communities. In 1883, Sarah was the first indigenous woman to publish a memoir, telling the story of her experiences. She achieved national fame and raised awareness of the plight of the Northern Paiute. But most Americans still romanticized ideas of Western settlement. Sarah grew increasingly frustrated. She moved back to the reservation and opened a school for Northern Paiute children. When Sarah died in 1891, the New York Times published her life story. Obituaries of people of color were rarely featured in newspapers in the 1800s, so this was a testament to her national impact. Sarah did not live to see the changes she hoped for, but her work inspired a new generation of campaigners for Native American rights. How do indigenous activists fight to empower their communities today? <laughs> 